Today we are going to witness some of the most anticipated Kickstarters in the history of indie comics. This is their chance to be funded and come alive. Are you ready? Indie comic book fans, are you ready? For my dogs in attendance and for the five, maybe ten people who are watching around the world, are you ready? Live from no studio but my dining room in Florida, a state in the United States of America, Let's get ready to fund some Kickstarters. All right, guys. Let's get to it. We have some new graphics that we're going to wind up using going forward. Indie Comics come alive on Kickstarter, now live. I know you're all thrilled to see the new graphics as I am. We have a bunch of Kickstarters to go through. One thing I want to just talk about quickly is that we are now going to have a pick of the week. The pick of the week is going to be based on a lot of factors, and it's always going to be a hard choice. The uh, hardest part of the choice is actually picking which one we should wind up featuring. So this week we fe featured Alter Life. Now, for anyone who doesn't know all about Alter Life, this has been one of the uh, most I, uh, up and down projects that have been around lately, as the creator just tried to do a kickstar recently that failed unfortunately but as he failed he did it with such courage and dignity and grace that it really is something that should garner your support it's a it's a good comic book series i mean there's there's nothing but great things to be said about it and the creator himself and we're actually going to watch the video right now All right, guys, so that was the life, the Alter Life video. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a great project. It's something that we chose to showcase because we really do believe that the creator puts a lot of passion into a project, and I think that's going to be one of the number one things that we're going to wind up spotlighting every week is the ones, the meaning the projects that we see people who are who are absolutely going out of their way to create some some very passionate and some very, you know, intense pieces of work. Uh, we would love to showcase everything every week, but that's obviously not going to happen. So we can't, you know, go through everything and throw our support behind everything. So it is going to be something that we are going to have to comb through. 
but you know that that's the way of life not everything can be the top thing one of the things that we are going to do and i think this is just fair is if a kickstarter is taken off and it doesn't really need a lot of heavy support. It doesn't mean we're not supporting it this way and putting it out there and still advertising for it. It just means that we're going to sort of kind of focus on Alter Life. And we're going to put some energy into helping that get funded because we think it should be funded. So we only have to get behind $2,300 in the next 16 days. I think that's very possible. And I ask for everyone's help who's part of this, watching this, or who knows anything about the project to please share it. Get it out there. Let's see this come to life. Uh, as far as the other projects going on, let's take a look. Shelter Division, the beginning. Another Bob Sally hit. Has already funded. Has 28 hours to go, but there's still time. This, you know, just because something's funded, people make that mistake that there can't still be an opportunity to get behind the Kickstarter. Understand that... When, when something's funded, that doesn't mean that it's there, it's profitable yet. That doesn't mean that they've, they don't need any more support. It doesn't mean you shouldn't get behind it. If you like it, you should be part of the Kickstarter. You should never be looking at this. If you're looking at this, you're cheating yourself. Look at this. Look at this. And if you start looking at this, especially with Shelter Division, you're going to find many reasons to back this project, including the team. You got Bob Sally. You got an Italian comic artist, Francesco. Uh, new to me, I haven't heard that name, and HDE is doing the lettering. And I've seen him around, I've seen him letter other projects. So you have a very strong group of people who are working on a comic book, and sometimes that's the place to go, to see the team, see who's behind the work. American Kingdom, uh, this is going to be an issue three mini trade. Another fantastic idea. Imagine if we never wound up becoming, you know, a superpower that was based on democracy. And instead, this is based upon a king's rule. And it is definitely a trippy idea considering everything that... Uh, especially everything that we've learned about the current administration, everything that we've seen our country go through. The idea that it could be, you know, tangibly a lot worse is a, a very interesting thing right now. To just understand that even though some people might feel like this is a very bad time in our history, we still have democracy. And democracy is a gift that I think we truly have. And this comic book kind of explores that what would happen if we didn't have such a gift. So I definitely suggest that. Uh, the Green Comic. Okay, so now Trip Green Comic is an interesting idea. This still needs a little bit of funding, so definitely get on it. We have three days to go. What if you were born green? Not the Hulk. You don't have superpowers, you're just green. Imagine trying to live a life being such an outcast and so different and how that could affect you. And this is what this comic does. And obviously, I would assume that it goes way beyond him just being green at some point. I haven't read it yet. I do know it's a very interesting idea. It's something that I'm going to be paying attention to and I will be backing it later today. This is something that just came to me over the weekend, so... I haven't really been too familiar with it before, but it's definitely something that I find very interesting. We don't have time to watch every video, and I'm not going to put it on, but this is a video probably to watch. It sounds like a very interesting idea. The tagline is, Trip has green skin, and no one can really tell why. An accident at the local creek starts a series of events that will change his life forever. Uh, we have Seed Seekers, Comic Volume 1. Three young adventures continue... Adventurers continue on their epic journey and along the way discover their heart, courage, and friendship to fight evil. Sounds like a good plug. It's got very interesting art. You know, it, it reminds me a lot of Fern Gully. If you like Fern Gully, this is definitely something that you might want to be a part of. Delia Blast. Uh, absolutely fantastic idea. I love this comic book. Anyone who's been following us has seen us talk a lot about this. Um... Evolution, Evolu uh, Evolution, publishing. I can't pronounce that right now. I'm sorry, my uh, my dyslexic brain's going crazy. But they produce some of the best stuff right here. These guys, um, and this is just another home run hit. They actually made a plush doll of this. It's fantastic. Become a fan. It really. This is. I've read the book, so I've actually reviewed it. It is a great story. It's very interesting. It grabs you right away in issue one. It is something you want to be part of, so get part of it today. 
Here's another interesting one. Um, we have Jailbait and Trailer Trash, Mature Graphic Novel Anthology. Trailer, uh, sorry, Jailbait and Trailer Trash is a collective store, short stories in a graphic novel format illustrated by three or more talented sequential artists. So here's another anthology. Anthologies are a big thing nowadays, and that's because it helps a lot of us get together, and it helps us all have a book, and it gives us different stories. Uh, anthologies are some of the best things you can be part of, so if you can be part of an anthology, it's the way to go. This is a very interesting um, idea of different stories to tell. It's obviously not going to be an all-ages thing, but it, I mean, if you look, we're just going to quickly look at some of the art. Definitely reminds me of the uh, the the 90s art, some of the uh, the new millennial art that we've been seeing popping up. It's definitely got a diverse cast of stories and a diverse cast of issues. We've got artist David Graham, who who's doing obviously some amazing art. This is just a project that if you like anthologies and you like a bunch of different stories, it's something you got to jump on. And I believe they still need some help. We have 10 days to see this get funded, so if you have uh, a love for anthologies, this is definitely one you're going to want to pick up. You're going to want to watch the video. Remember, all these are on the site, Creators Written Sins. We are under this week's title for right now. We are Create New Worlds with the help of Kickstarter. So, back to it. Monsters and other scary shit. Russell has brought together an amazing cast of people and creators to make something that is going to be fantastic i am a backer i absolutely need the book to have those cool green eyes so we need to raise 335 dollars so share this share this share this now here's a cool thing this is gonna be a gigantic book it's gonna be available for depending on what you're doing there's a nightmare nightmarish hardcover i believe this is the one i went for um I just I've seen some of the stories in this. I got to read a preview of it. It really is some interesting shit. I mean, it's a lot of stories in one. There's a lot of interesting things. It's not just one type of format. Instead, there's many different types of format and different types of stories. Once again, if you like anthologies, this is one of the ones that you want to get your hands on. It's just full of creators. I mean, the list of creators, as you're going to see right here, goes on and on and on for days and I believe I heard don't quote me on this but this is going to be around 250 pages I could be getting that wrong but I believe it's going to be around 250 pages it's, it's going to be that I mean right now it just in here they say it's glorious 224 page I don't know why I think 250 I don't know if something was added I might be wrong about that but either way fantastic fantastic uh cast fantastic Storyline, fantastic anthology. You, you can't go wrong with backing this one. If you're a fan of comic books, you're going to win by getting in on this one. Tits, the Transmigrant Interdimensional Taxi Cab Service has 16 days to go. It is funded, but if you have not already backed this, you are doing yourself a disservice. This is honestly one of the better comic books I've had the opportunity to not only watch grow, but actually read and, and see the the... The art in it is fantastic. The story is hilarious. It really is an entertaining comic book. They just keep getting it right. And they keep churning them out. I can't wait for the first graphic novel in it to see some maybe outtakes. It's a very interesting idea. The basic idea is that, you know, do we have aliens living on our planet? And those, planet, those aliens can travel in, in between dimensions using a taxi cab service. But for this taxi cab service... These two characters right here are constant screw-ups who are always making mistakes and they run into this cop and they wind up dragging her into a whole intergalactic issue. So, if you haven't already tits, you, to, uh, signed on to get some tits in your hand, this is the chance to do it. And there's even a level where you can get, I believe, all of them and catch up. There's one for digital and then there's also right here. You can get new to the series, you can get involved in it. Now is the time to jump on. Here we go, uh, Shaman's Destiny, uh, 148 pages of action, support us on Kickstarter. Uh, this was passed on to me. It, it looks very interesting. I've seen a couple of videos that have been produced for it. There is 16 days to go. I'll definitely become a backer on this. Uh, 
I don't know a lot about the creator behind it. I'm only starting to get to know him now. But he's looking to turn his six comic books into a trade back issue, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's got some interesting art. It looks like some interesting story. If you go to Kickstarter itself and find this on it, you can honestly see that the project is very uh, lifelike, and it's already ready to go. It's not like he's trying to create something. He's actually bringing what he's done already together. So I think it's, I think it's interesting. Um, I definitely think it's worth the time. This one I thought was hysterical, and it might be offensive to some people, and I live in the South now, so some people might be offended by the uh, the hillbilly or for hire monster hunting action. Hopefully no one gets offended, and if you do get offended, remember a sense of humor is free. You don't always have to think it's funny, but you have to respect other people's ability to make jokes. It's an interesting idea. Uh, I'm, I think I'm backing it if I'm... Yeah, I'm already backing it. If I wasn't backing it, I was going to be backing it. The team... It, he just goes around being a badass. And who doesn't like that? I mean, the 1980s and the 1990s showed us a lot of badass, you know, comedies and a lot of bad act badass action films. And this is kind of like a take on that. But this guy is like kind of off of his rocker badass. So it, it's almost like uh, Evil Dead with a neck beard. So definitely worth checking out. I found it very funny from what I've seen about it. And obviously, I'm not just telling you. But I'm also a pleasure. Uh, Drexel issue one. This is another Bob Sally hit. You, you wouldn't expect him to be around, but he's around on everything it seems like. Because he's that good. Nathan Kelly is actually the creator of this. Uh, this is his art that you'll see throughout it. We have HDE again. We have Don Mathless. Sorry if I'm getting that wrong, Don. This is honestly a very interesting, and I haven't backed it for some reason. That's just because it's very hard to keep up with everything that I back because I literally deal with about 20 to 25 Kickstarters. Sometimes we don't show the Kickstarters. I try to have an open policy where we do everything, but some Kickstarters just I don't feel comfortable putting up. So if you're seeing it on the site, I've looked it over, and I at least think it's worth giving you the choice to decide what happens next. We only reject when I don't think that they've taken any time or energy into making a Kickstarter, and I don't think that's fair to Nathan Kelly, welcome to the program. We're actually talking about your uh, creation today, and we're hoping to get more people behind it. I see you're funded, so congratulations. That's always a great thing. But, like I said before, just because something's funded doesn't mean we stop backing it. It means we keep backing it. It just means that you're guaranteed that if you back it, you're going to get it. You don't have any worries or any problems about whether or not it's going to show up in your door. This is going to show up in your door. you got Bob Sally behind it, who's done amazing things. Bob Sally's not going to be part of something that's not going to come to life. Nathan Kelly's not going to let you down. So this is definitely a comic book to check out. And the tagline, it is a small town unleashes a monster to save them from something worse. Now, we all know that if you unleash a monster, some bad shit's probably going to happen. So this is probably not going to be one of those happy stories all the time. So... That makes it even more interesting to me. I can't wait to read it. Can't wait to have it in my hands. I'm out. Obviously, I have to back the project. So, you know what? Let's back it right now. Uh, I'm going to go... Let's see. What's the difference? A Cump Snarpeg. I think I'll go with this one right here. And I'm going to finish that later. Because I don't want to give you all you people my uh, my credit card information. I don't know which one of you are a hacker. They're going to end up signing up to weird stuff. So I'll come back and finish that when we're not live. Um, home 5. This is the epic conclusion to the story. Will it end in triumph or tragedy? This is the fifth, I believe, Kickstarter given to us by Black Wolf Productions over this title. This is the end, supposedly. Uh, basically, it looks like, you know, for those who don't know, she's she wound up going to a different... Uh, a different world and now it looks like just by the title right here she's gonna have to choose which world she goes back to the world she knows or the world she has been made to be part of and how does the stories that have been intertwining the entire time wrap up and does this mean it's the end of the line or will there be another possible sequel maybe by under a different title maybe a prequel we will have to wait and see but Right now, Home 5 is officially funded, but as we know, that does not mean we do not fund, keep pledging to it. 
If you like the idea when you hit this button and you read all this stuff, that means that you wind up you wind up fun trying to help fund it. Sorry, Jax is running around. I feel like that British guy from that video. And now the dogs. Because every time Jax runs around, the dogs have to be loud. Hey! Leave him alone. I feel I definitely feel like a British guy now. All I need is the kid in the uh, in the Uber little uh, stroll. Uh, what was it? The walker to run through. All right, Emmanuel, God with us. This is by Scott Zambelli. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Scott. This is a a fantastic, uh, a comprehensive and chrono, chrono, chronological adaptation of the four Gospels of the Bible, with a single storytelling of the life of Christ. Now. Uh, I know Scott. Scott's a great guy. I really think he's a passionate person. I, I've seen him talk on topics. I know that he, he doesn't at all hold back in what he he believes and what he says. And that's something to be, to be I believe, inspired by. And I'm, I think, yeah, I already, I already backed the project. I think I was the first person to back the project in this one because I'd seen it and we were at the doctor's office and it just happened to be up my screen. The art in it is absolutely amazing. I know some people might have, you know, the instant knee-jerk reaction that, oh, I don't, I'm not going to do something like this because it's religious. And to that, I would say you should always challenge yourself. You should always read something that you aren't always comfortable with or you don't really understand. And I don't think that you should just discount it because you instantly think, oh, that's about something I don't believe in or I don't subscribe to. I think you should always invest your time into learning things. And for those who are religious, this looks like it's going to be a fantastic journey. And I definitely think it's worth the time and energy. We have The Devil's Pool, another graphic novel and back issues. But dazed after a supernatural encounter, a weaver, weaver from surviving The Devil's Pool, Ben Caveri, seeks out the familiar faces of who put him there. It looks like... A very badass story that's going to wind up being done. I think it's going to be black and white. I, I didn't see if it was actually going to be in color, but obviously, Jax found something that wasn't a mess and had to make it a mess. Uh, obviously, it looks like it's going to be a very interesting story. It needs some support. We have only 12 days to go, so another one to get behind. And Follow the Wave. Follow the Wave is the, uh, let's see, Follow the Wave is a 52-page graphic novel from Italian artist-writer Stefan Cardassiolo. Of course, it doesn't get loud when I have to mispronounce a name. A gritty revenge tale for all ages. Alright, so this is a very interesting amount a very interesting art project that I've seen I really haven't seen a lot of story for this one uh, I know he right here explains a little bit more about the story but I haven't seen the lettering or anything but the art alone it's very fascinating to me how it looks uh, just in that, I mean, I'm a big fan of the art, and I think the art being different is sometimes a good thing. So this is something to look at. They definitely could use some help. It's got an ambitious goal. It's got some distance to run together. So, And as always, there's a video. So if you notice that we don't generally put up anything without a video, because I think that I do think that you want to put a lot in. And if you're not willing to at least put a, a video up, you're doing something wrong. I actually have to talk to Austin Allen Hamble about Steel Wool. Steel Wool is a great Kickstarter that we supported. But that's it for now. Um, I don't see anyone who asked a question. I saw a lot of people did try to join us. Let me see. I want to thank everyone who did join us. I'm just looking back. Ryan Palmer said uh, his colorist is Italian and he is amazing. Uh, my artist was from Prague, so, you know, it's great that we live in a time where we no longer are just stuck to work with the people stuck right in front of us. We can work with anyone around the world. Uh, I know a couple of you guys are from the blizzard or nor'easter from hell that I heard is not as bad as it was going to be, so thank you for tuning in. Uh, 
Let's see. I'm trying to look. See, Nathan Kelly stopped by. We're very happy to have him. I don't see any questions. Uh, Ray, Ray, Ryan Palmer said, I am list, listing some projects to back. This is great, Rob. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what it is. That's what we do. We, we try to... This is all important. I know you can't back every one of these projects, and some people can't really afford to back many projects because, you know, it's hard. We're all trying to commit, uh, commit to making our own comments. But digital copies are pretty cheap. I mean, you can skip a coffee and wind up getting uh, a digital copy for some of the prices of coffee nowadays. On top of that, you could always donate a dollar. I mean, at the very bottom of this page, you'll see we have our program, The Creative Process. A dollar can make dreams come true. The one dollar initiative. This basically speaks to the fact that if you do think someone has something, just giving them a single dollar winds up doing something that a lot of people don't realize. So we're just going to go to tits right here and we're going to look 159 backers now this is important because later when people look back at this because i guarantee you people do look back at this they will look at how many people supported this so if they want to go to like a uh a publisher let's say in a, in a few months and they want to go that route which is a good route to go when you want to try to get your product out there in a bigger and grander fashion this number becomes important more than this number because this number right here that's just money this is the amount of fans. And by increasing that, you're already building in an audience. Because if that's 159, that's a demograph. You know, you have to understand those people are sometimes, if not always, overpaying for a comic and they understand that. So if 159 people are willing to overpay for it, there's probably a good estimation that there are thousands of people who will pay cover price for it without promoting it heavily. Now, as you promote it heavy, you'll see it. Now, the perfect example is Bob Sally. Bob Sally has gotten a great following. 293 people are backing his project. And Bob Sally winds up doing um, rewards that aren't even that expensive. Full digital for seven. Give me salvagers for three dollars. So Bob Sally's giving it cheaper than a lot of other people are doing it. But he's also got a higher number here, which is important. He's got a lot of supporters. I mean, we'll go over here to... Where was it? Drexel. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Okay, Bob Sally's on this one, 150 backers. Bob Sally's got a name, and that's kind of important. When you have a, a name and you build up that name, it makes it so when you're on a project, you wind up being able to really have, really have a backing that follows you. And it's 21 days, 150 backers. I don't see why they don't break 200 with this, with this project either. So that's just something to keep in mind. All these things matter. One dollar helps you build an audience. And I guarantee you that people are looking at how many backers something has. And the more backers, the more they're going to feel, especially if they're new to it. You know, you have Alter Life. already got 73. That's awesome. My Kickstarter ended, I think, with 98. I'd have to go back and look. Well, I think we had 98. I was very disappointed we didn't break 100. That'll have to be for issue two. But as you can see, the backers, you know... Are there? I mean, you have 40 backers here, which means they're 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 really able to generate a good amount of money with less backers. But if, if he can get more backers, that's only going to make him look better. So that's something that you know it doesn't cost a lot to back. You know, some people have to thank you. Some people have the digital copy. I went for five dollars with the digital copy. I thought that was the best way to go. But I mean, you know, you'll see it, and these these numbers really wind up mattering in the end of the day. So when you donate a dollar, you're helping someone generate more buzz. I mean, give a lot of credit to Markel Dupree. And Markel, I, I know him, he's a, he's a good dude. We always talk. He is uh, Starch Ambition. Where is Starch Ambition? That's a good question, Brian. Why didn't I see that? I gotta look that up. Give me a second. I don't know why that's not loaded. Thank you for pointing that out. It is on our site. Uh, I just got Brian E. Lau, is that how you pronounce it? He is actually part of the uh, the Kickstarter. I don't know why he didn't show up, but I do love showing this part off. So let's take a look. All right. You just type it in there. Here we go. We have a variant cover. We're going to go with this one. We're going to go with a variant cover now. I have to look to make sure he's actually in the Kickstarter because sometimes something falls off. I know, it's on the head. Well, it's on one of the headers. It is right here, right now. See it? This is actually what we're going to be talking about. So, I don't know why. That, there it goes. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about a Kickstarter. We're 100, 
1,432 into, I'll tell you the budget in a second, 4,500, we have eight, eight, uh, 18 days to go, and because it wasn't listed, let's take a look at the video. As an independent creator, I decided to put together a preview issue so I could start building a fan base, take it to comic conventions and introduce this vision to people, this book. So then after that, we had a Kickstarter for issue number one, which was successful thanks to people like you and all of our great fans. Thank you so much for supporting us. We used that money to print issue one and to fund the creation of issue two, which is pretty much complete. We just have a few little details to finish with uh, editing and whatnot. So as you can see, issue two's cover behind me here by Neil Anderson, I think just turned out magnificent. With your support, we'll be able to print issue number two and get it into your hands. Also take it to Comic-Cons and continue to build our audience. And then also support the funding of issue number three, which we started writing and I'm so excited for that. So. Please consider supporting us. Thank you for watching and have a good day. guys so that was uh, Stonja and Ambition by our good friend Brian uh, I'm looking into it right now to make sure it's part of the Kickstarter I don't know why it looks like it was I'm on a different screen but in the meantime uh, when you guys don't see something on our site or if we happen to have missed something or, or you just want to be promoted on our site Feel free to reach out to me, Rob Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-I-N. If you don't know it and you're watching this video later, not on live, and you want to be covered, just ask. I mean, there's we don't have a huge amount of necessity for what you have to be, or who you have to be, or what you have to be doing to be covered. We just have to have the feeling that you are, in fact, taking something serious. There are some risks with Kickstarters, and it always makes me very nervous that certain Kickstarters don't look like they're ready to be a Kickstarter and that bothers me. I don't think people should be using Kickstarter to make money. As you saw, every single one of these today have made a video. They have put passion into their projects. They have shown us that this is something that they take serious. If you're not going to be taking something serious, why should anyone take you serious? This is a business and this is something that I think a lot of people forget. And I don't want to sound preachy here, but I've been a manager for many years of my life. And I'll tell you this, the consumer who you're going to have to deal with eventually that isn't a creator, who isn't going to give you a chance, who's going to want something right away that they can identify with, is going to have certain expectations. And you're going to have to live up to those expectations. And on Kickstarter, one of those expectations is going to be a video. You gotta have a video. If you don't have a video, you're setting yourself up for failure. And beyond that, one huge mistake I think a lot of people are making as we're going through all this is they don't do something where they, you know, show the team. The team or who make it. I mean, they're backing your team. You have to acknowledge their your team. I mean, I'll show you just real quick. We're gonna bounce onto my project and I wanna show you how much uh, I don't know what this is. Welcome to Spotlighter. All right. Um, not ready. Come on, go away. All right. Well, I could show you if it wasn't being stupid, <laughs> but I'm not ready to do uh whatever it wants. Let's see if I can do it again. Let's get started later. All right. So, um, 
As you can see, this was fetish babies. We had 95, but three of those people fell off during the funding process. So it was 98, because I remember it was three people fell off. So look, this is, this is my team. This is what I did. I explained my team. I showed who we were. There's not a picture of me. You're all welcome. You don't really have to look at me. Here's a little tiny one of me with the Hulk, because I ain't scared of no Red Hulk. Uh, you have my wonderful artist, Satane Zillia. I gave her, you know, an ability to go to her page if you actually click on her. If you click on this photo, it takes her right there. Carlos Villas just joined us, and he is actually here. Carlos Villas is part of our project. He's always been part of our project. Let me show you his uh, his art is in our update right here. This is Carlos Villas' art. And we give credit to everyone who's part of the project, and you have to do that with your Kickstarter. You want every one of your people on your team to be part of it. You know, if you add something, because this was a later, a uh, this became a Kickstarter exclusive piece of art that we had to earn. Yeah, Leah, Leah Letterman. That's, I mean, Leah Letterman, uh, editor. I don't know why editors aren't always put on this. Thank you for bringing that up, Brian. Leah is, you know, a fantastic editor, and I don't think people give love to their editors. I know without the editor, I wouldn't be as good. She challenged me to make my story better. A lot of people who read the original story that we sent out before I, she wound up getting to edit it are going to be pleasantly just surprised to see the net. We went up at least two levels with Leah's uh, helping of me and my wife, telling us where to fix things that were kind of weaker and how to how to mold it. So definitely, I mean, you want your team on this, and if you're not putting a team and you're not you're not talking about who's on your project, I think you're doing a disservice to not just those people involved and yourself but you're also doing a disservice to the project itself because on kickstarter they're investing in you more than they're investing in anything else so they're investing in the people behind it the one i will say uh exception to the rules anthologies sometimes anthologies to list it i mean you'll have monsters who and other scary shit that did list everything and it goes on for a, a bit of time because he listed everything. I mean, this is in itself. I've I've joked with him that he should turn his Kickstarter campaign into a comic book because it's that long, and it's not a bad thing. You know, some people don't want to put this much into their Kickstarter, and that's fine. I get that. And with with an anthology, sometimes you don't know who's going to back out at the last minute. So anthologies, they say, be the one place you don't really have to put too many of who's behind it, like little bio sections, but you need to have a bio section for at least the people running it. And I know Russell did that. Uh, Tits, I know, has always given credit to their artists. They, they give credit to a person who's featuring a, their voice on it. You go back to the other ones and it's full of information. I mean, these guys are very transparent about that. Uh, here's one, I know that he, I think he's the writer and the artist, so it, this is more about him, so. I definitely think he should have talked more about himself a little bit more in this, and I think that, you know, that'll help him more if he does that, because again, they're investing in us. Uh, we have the interview for this gentleman on our site right now, Mark. I don't want to say that last name since it's Italian and I'm going to ruin it, but I think it, it's it's a funny comic book and he had a great interview. Uh, home, we have, once again, Home, I don't know if we actually get to see the uh, artists and all that. On it. No, here's the team. See, again, the team. And even you get special guests, people giving credit to people, you know? Uh, this one, I think we skimmed over this one for some reason. Uh, this is uh, full of intrigue adventure as Newton learns more about what he comes in the face to face with the enemy at last. This is apparently a number three issue. I only added this recently. Don't know a lot about it, but I remember it looked very interesting. Um, but let's see if he has the team on it. Check this out. Uh, he has the uh, rewards. He explains where the money goes. He says thank you. Doesn't talk about the team, and I do think that's kind of uh, a bad thing. I know for Scott, this is all him, and I think that he did a great job putting this together. Uh, the Devil's Pool, I believe there definitely is something about the team in here when I read it. I have mine with Pick. Alright, so Brian has his with Pick, so let's go take a look at Brian's. Where did it go? It better not have gone away on us again. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's take a look. Brian says his has his team. He's got a nice one. Brian definitely, I mean, 
the presentation in this one is really good. You have the cover by Neil Anderson really giving credit to who's doing it. It's the right way to do it. Cover by. Uh, you got a lot of the preview issue information. I mean, he puts it all together. Here's some pictures of his team. That's great. I mean, this is what you want. You want faces with who your team is. They even have an original song. How many Kickstarters can say that they have an original song? Let's see. It's written especially for the book. Uh, it is by written by Jason Cologne and Brian, um, who did the electrical instrumental. So look at that. Brian's also a uh, musician. But, I mean, you see it. Here it is. You get a bunch of pictures of the people you're going to be backing. And I think that's important. You want to make your Kickstarter human because... Ultimately, it's hard when you don't really know it and you don't have a comic book in your hand. And as a creator, and here's the creator section, we don't have the opportunity. He looks like the guy who played Lex Luthor. I don't remember his name, but the guy who played Lex Luthor on the Batman vs. Superman, he looks just like him in that picture. Here's Leia uh, from Dirk Manning. Dirk Manning, if you don't know who Dirk Manning is, you're doing yourself a dis disservice. But go look him up. Go look up right or wrong. It'll change your life. But Leo Let uh, Letterman... Uh, and the rest of the team, Neil Anderson, John, um, Irwin, and Tyler. And this is it now. You see people. These are human beings creating this. So when you're on Kickstarter, Kickstarter is about an idea coming to life. And you're backing people. And very often you're overpaying for certain things. So keep that in mind. This has been Kickstarter this week. Uh, I gotta go. A Jax wants my attention. I think we're going to get a Kit Kat. I hope this all helped everyone, and I hope that you all seriously take the time to go to the site and look up what Kickstarters to back this week. I will talk to you all next week when we add new things to the list and show what's brand new.